I'm Cormac O'Kane, I'm the Head of Design and Digital Media at Letterkenny IT. What type of courses do you teach here? I suppose we'd have like the main digital media programmes, we have digital media and visual communications and also animation at undergraduate level and then we've got a master's in motion graphics. And what's your own background? My own background is animation, I studied animation at Edinburgh College of Art back in the early 90s and I worked freelance, freelance animator for a while both in the UK with Bob Godfrey and Red Kite Studios in Edinburgh and then I moved to Dublin like full time lecturer in animation, but at the same time I was doing freelance work with Cavalier and Brown Bag as well. So. Now, when you were still in the 90s and uh, compared to now, how much of a difference have you seen in, in, in the sector? Oh, it's, it's amazing. Like when I was studying, um, there were no computers. Like I shot my graduation film in 16mm film, and that time it's like you shot the film, you sent it off to the lab, it came back a week later before you knew whether the shot had worked or not. Now, with like the computers, it's instantaneous. So, like the the production time scales have compressed radically. You know, like there's so much more that you can do now digitally um, in terms of like special effects. Like special effects at that time was like you were winding the film back on double exposures. Now with After Effects, you know, you can just like co composite over the top. So it's it's amazing what you can do. You know, in the past for drawing animation, it was a case of you drew pencil and paper, then you traced over acetate with a felt up pen and then painted the back of each cell and waited for them to dry before filming them. Now you've got like a, a Wacom tablet and you can just draw directly onto the computer and just click and fill. So you can do so much more in, in the time scales now than you could 15, 20 years ago. And again, um, infrastructure is a very important mm -hmm. for you to deliver a first class course. Absolutely. Like again, like we talked about back in the pre-digital days, you know, you were requiring like a massive amount of equipment. You, you know, if you were shooting 16 millimeter, you were having like your rostrum camera or you were having like your Bolex cameras for 3D work and your lights and everything. Um, for drawing animation, it was like animation tables and digital video assists and stuff like that. You know, you were talking like thousands of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands to run an animation studio. Now you can run an animation studio out of a laptop with four or five pieces of software. Um, so, you know, like, the inf like what you need to produce video or digital media content now is, uh, like, it's amazing, like, how, how light you can travel. But in terms of the infrastructure, yeah, you need to have that equipment, like, this, you need to have the, the fast machines, like, with, with the processors, with, like, the, the memory capability. Because that's the thing, like, digital media and, like, design proof, we each, memory resources, you know, like the, the amount of sort of st server storage that the design department uses is about four times the rest of the college put together. It's just like we, we're, we're, we produce so much content and like that, like that's our, the main thing in terms of infrastructure is the ability that you've got like the multiple machines to render or you've got the, the server space to hold all the files um, and you've also got like the machines able to produce, if you've got 20 students all wanting to, to film and edit at the same time, you've got to have that the resources to provide for that. Otherwise, if you've only got like one machine that you can edit on, you've got a queue and a backlog. That's not really the, the ideal educational experience for them. How has the creative sector um, dealt with? Uh, how, what's their reaction like with some of the students that like to come in and find them work in the creative sector? What's the creative sector like here in the northwest? Mm -hmm. It's very good. Like it's. it's it's getting better all the time. There's like there's more and more companies setting up looking for for students for graduates. Um, like for instance, in animation, we've got like three sixty production in Derry, but just in motion graphics and animation for like the BBC and the History Channel. We've also done good dog ears, which is in the Rosie Red series. Um, in Donegal, there's like a number of like small independent companies. Um, there's uh, graduates have set up on their own as well, working freelance, and as you move down towards like Galway and Mayo, you've got Telegale and people like that, so there's big employers in the sort of the, the Connacht Ulster area that, um, you know, are recruiting our students, and then again, like as you go across towards Belfast, there's like a number of studios like Black North and Flickapix, our students would be working with.
Is there much of a demand now as students? Are they are they are they looking for more creative skills? Are they looking for new, newer ways of doing things? What's the, what's the, what's the caliber of the student that's coming in through your courses now? The, the students are wanting to do so much more. You know, in the past you might have someone who said like, yeah, I want to do graphic design or I want to design logos or I, I want to do animation. You know, I want to be a drawn animator or so. Now the students are sort of like, I want to do everything. You know, I want to know how to edit. I want to know how to compose the music. I want to know how to storyboard, I want to be able to make my own films, I want to do music videos, I want to do adverts, I want to do motion graphics, I want to animate. There's, there's because so much is possible now, one of the problems is like trying to fit everything into a course, you know, it's like really our courses have expanded and evolved, like the new animation program came out of the digital media program because it was obvious that, you know, you, there was so much the students wanted to know about animation that couldn't be covered in just one module, it really it deserved a programme of its own. And that's happened across, it's the same in, in visual communication. You're looking around and saying, well, should there be like a separate programme in web design rather than having that contained within the, the visual communication programme? So the students are wanting to know so much more and it's, it's hard sometimes to decide what, what do they need to know. And I suppose it comes back down to, it's about the creativity, it's about the ideas. Like the technology is constantly evolving and changing you know, what are graduates coming out now using equipment that didn't exist when they started the course? Um, you know, like the iPad was only just coming out four years ago, now it's ubiquitous. So you can't really plan around a technology-based program, you know, it's all about the ideas and the structures. Like I keep telling the students, like, all computers is, is an expensive 2B pencil. You know, it's just another piece of equipment for you to make things with. Um, but if you don't have the strong ideas, if you don't have the design ideas, the, the creative concepts, the original script or story that you want to tell, then all the technology and all the equipment in the world is not going to produce a good product at the end. Now, we're at this uh, Media Tech uh, conference now today. It's taken on a lot of different European uh, countries, uh, other uh, border agencies from Derry, uh, people from Cork. How important is it to tap in to these conferences and uh, learn from what other countries are doing as well? Oh, invaluable, you know, it's it's the sharing of ideas, you know, like, y you can't just think in a bubble, like, if you're just sitting there on your own, like, you could be trying to, like, grapple and solve a problem that someone has already solved in Cork or um, France or Norway or wherever, so it's, it's that idea, you know, the sharing of experiences that helps everyone's programmes evolve, you know, it's like, if you just, you're just getting other people's ideas and inputs, advice, help. Sometimes it's just a new way of thinking or a new way of looking at a problem that helps you solve them. And the whole thing about like conferences, like I guess it's all about building links, building networks, you know, the, pos the potential for collaborative programs or ideas or projects. Like they, they come out of conferences where you meet people and you discuss ideas, you know. Again, like you have to like meet people to sort of make those things happen. Finally, uh, how, how would you like to see your, your, your own uh, courses develop now with the students? How would you like to see that improve and develop? Well, I want to see, um, I suppose it's just giving the students the space to produce more and better content every year. You know, it's like you always look and see that when it comes to the graduate exhibition every year, you look at work and you, you always want to say this is the best year yet. You know, you want to see that the, the programmes are getting stronger and better. So as we went through like uh, a lot of change last year with every five years the programs go through a programmatic review with a review to see that they're still current and changes were made which we felt would make the programs better so now we're looking forward over the next year or two to see as those changes are rolled out uh, how this, the student experience improves and their productions at the end of it will be more professional um, and that the students will be more industry ready because that's the other thing you know it's it's one thing to come out knowing how to make things, but it's another, it's another thing to know how to get things made and how to deal with the industry, how to survive in the industry. I think that's the hardest thing for the students to learn.